we're going through the Psalms. And the Psalms are the, the uh, as uh, a lot of people say, is like a, a food for our soul. Psalms are the prayers, thoughts of the God, godly people, people who are, who are in different situations and different uh, uh, moments of life, they are praying. So uh, Psalms are very, very important. And now we will read one Psalm. Uh, actually, two psalms. The, this psalm 42 and 43 used to be one psalm. And we will study this Sunday, first part of the psalm, and then next Sunday we will go again in the same psalm. This is a very, very famous uh, psalm. There is a famous songs we want to sing, and uh, we will sing on the end uh, about this uh, psalm. It's a psalm that uh, the writer... He's struggling, he's um, a little bit disappointed, but on the end he finds hope in God. And uh, please stand up with me, and I will ask Sister Ira if she can come and help us in read. Stand up, if you can stand up. Uh, Psalm 42 and 43, we will read together. Please find in your Bibles or in your phones, if you have a Bible there, Psalm 42 and 43, just think about how Psalm is describing his situation and how he's describing God. That's very, that will be too focus uh, this morning on this Psalm. Psalm 42 and 43. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my flood, my food, day and night, while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with a throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep, at the roar of your waterfalls, all your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God mm -hmm. of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man, deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the lyre. O oh God, my God, why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let's pray before we go. Heavenly Father, speak to our hearts and our souls through your word. We are praying this in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Sister Ira. <clears throat> the context of this psalm, uh, this psalm is, uh, is, is written, or the melody is written as well, by the sons of Korah. Through this psalm, we can see that there is e either somebody from the worship team, Levites, from the tribe of Le Levite, uh, wrote this uh, psalm, or maybe the King David, 
who is in exile, he wrote this psalm because King David want uh, he enjoy to sing and to dance, <laughs> you know, and uh, and uh, and uh, most likely this is a very hard situation for them. They are on exile from Jerusalem, from the temple, from the place where the, there was a direct contact with God, and they are in the northern area in Jordan, in among mountains, and they are thinking and remembering the times where they have been in Jerusalem. Most likely, maybe uh, the psalmist uh, uh, saw the deer, how drink water <laughs> there on the mountains, uh, because this is. Not not typical picture in a, for the desert uh, <laughs> city. And then the psalmist was inspired by Holy Spirit to write this psalm that we are reading uh, and studying this morning. What we can see that he's, uh, this uh, psalmist, he's like, uh, he's longing for God. He said, my soul thirsts for God. My soul is dry for meeting with God. And we can see that he's isolated, he's missing relationship with God, he's missing to go to the temple, he's missing to be with God's people as well. He said, I remember when with a joy and shout, we celebrate the Hebrew people in Old Testament, they have a few celebrations when everybody were coming together and singing, and he was he was a little bit distressed. He, he spiritually, he's dry because he cannot have relationship with God and also with God's people. That's very important to have relationship with God. Amen. When we lose this touch with God, then our soul be, became dry. <laughs> when we lose our touch with God's people, our soul became dry. Being together with God's people, we are sharing the joy. We are celebrating God, who He is, and what He has done. I remember when I became a young Christian, when Alex, as Alexander, I was uh, 19 years old, and usually in uh, former Yugoslavia, first thing after you finish high school, your parents don't encourage you too much to go to university. They send you in army. <laughs> and I was, as a young Christian, going in army in Montenegro, in capital of Podgorica, where uh, Alexander, uh, where, uh, rather from Argentina, Samuel is missionary there. And I was like, I didn't know for any Christian in those times. That was many years ago. And I remember first Sunday. First Sunday, I cannot be in a church with God's people I need to clean toilets. For me, that was like a shock. <laughs> and I was thinking, I said, oh, these people in Falkensteiner <laughs> are worshiping God and everything. And I'm in an army camp, and the, the captain gave me to, to clean the toilets. And I remember I, was, I knew only one song by memorization, how great they are. <laughs> oh, Lord, my God, when I see the wonders around <laughs> myself, and I'm watching the toilet, <laughs> and I'm cleaning. And it was like, and I said, I miss fellowship. As a young Christian, I realized how being together as a church, as a living body, is very important. And I made a decision. Every Sunday I must be in church. Only I can be sick and not come to be with brothers and sisters. Amen? And that's very important because we here receive gift from God, the power of the Holy Spirit. We got encouragement. We hear something. We sing song. We hear some testimonies like Alexander or Natasha, and we got encouraged. And then he cannot be with God's people. He, he said, my soul is dry. I'm thirst for you, uh, God. He feels also uh, that God is far away from him. When the big problem happened, he, he prayed to God and God didn't answer. And he said, he felt that God is far, uh, far away. He, a few times he mentioned, God, why are you here forsake me? Yeah? God, why are you here forsake me? And then you can read how he's feeling. And this is a typical uh, a clinical picture of depression. He is like uh, full of tears. He's downcast, he's discouraged, he's in turmoil. He feels he's forgotten. He's mourning. He's oppressed by enemy, and that is his feelings. And, and this psalm is like he's talking to God, but also he's talking to himself. <laughs> he, there is a dialogue in this psalm, which is very inter interesting. We will come to that uh, uh, later. Uh, and, 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 I, and I can see some, most of the time, sometimes we feel like this. And even if you are a Christian believer, if, even if you're a strong faith person, Sometimes you will go through hard life problems. Sometimes you ask yourself, God, why this? Sometimes you will have a tears. You will have uh, some sort of depression. You will ask yourself, God, why you have forsaken me? You are praying, nothing is happening. And, uh, and, and, and it's hard. And he is in exile. 
And I know some of you are in exile here in Serbia from different countries. And you ask yourself, why I'm here? What happened in God? But you need to be patient and, 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 and you need to listen to this psalm where on the end he mentioned three times, I will put my hope in God. Amen. I will put my hope in God. I, I will put my hope in God. Three times he's asking the question, why are you discouraged? Why are you the, the, uh, downcast? He said, I will put, put your hope in God and I will praise him because he's my rock and my salvation. Amen. And then he, uh, 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 he uh, but, but basically we can see that he knows uh, God. He, uh, if you uh, read through these two psalms or one psalm, you can see the explanation and uh, tributes about God. He's, for him, uh, he said, he's my God, loving God, my rock, my salvation, joy, source of life. He knows who is God. But he feels a little bit distance from him. And that's sometimes is happening in our lives. We know who God is. But when the hard situation comes, when some discouragement comes into our lives, that discouragement confuses us that we sometimes feel that God left us. We feel in the pain, in the midst of pain, that God is not there. Believers can be in this situation, and I, I must say this is normal, but this is a good situation where you can refresh your relationship with God. This is the good situation where God is speaking to you. This is the good situation when you're in troubles and problems that you didn't maybe cause by yourself, where God is close to you, even you don't feel it, and where you can make some good, important decisions to prioritize God first over your fears, over your worries, over your problems in your life. We can see the problems are overloading him. He's, uh, he's explaining, he said, my bones are hurting. The problems in my life is like a waves, just coming over me. Just come on. Uh, Sometimes the, the problems will come in our lives like a waves, waves. And many times we have been in this kind of situation where God saved us, where God took us out. He remembers uh, uh, a joyful time when he spent with God's people in verse 4. But also he remembers not only the past times of God's faithfulness, he recognized God's presence in the midst of this situation in verse 8. In verse 8 he said, But each day the Lord pour, pour out his unfailing love upon me in the midst of problems. And through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. He said, these waves are coming over me, but God is sending his love in my life. God is giving me a song I can sing. God is giving me a prayer I can praise him. He also, we can see that uh, he has a strong faith, but his faith is based on the word of God and based on God's promises. Uh, three times in this psalm is mentioned the word hope. Put your hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. This should be a statement of faith for our life as well. This Sunday, I would like that all of us, whatever we are in which problems, that we can say, I will put my faith in God. I will put my hope in God. And I will praise him again because he is my Savior and he is my God. Amen. Sometimes it's very hard. Uh, actually, he's speaking to himself here. He's listening and seeing his issues in life, but he's speaking to himself. He said, put your hope in God, and I will praise him again. Although I am far away, I will praise him again. But also, he's uh, watching in the past. He's seeking and understand the present, but also he's seeking the future guidance. In a, in, a, in a 43, Psalm 3 and 5, he asks for direction in his life. Whenever he is in a problem, he doesn't just cry and moan. He is asking for direction, guidance. Please read with me verse 3 and 5. He said, send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Although he is in darkness, he asks God's light. Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. Today, all of sometimes we can be in a, some darkness and confusion. We need to say, God, send me the light. Open me the best door. Give me the, the wisdom and eyes I can see where I should go. And he said, send me your truth, your word of God. That's the reason why we're emphasizing the word of God, to lead us, to guide us in life. And he said, let them lead me to the holy mountain, to the place where you live. 
Then I will go to the altar, the God of source of my life. I will praise you with my harp, or oh God, my God. He said, when you give me that light, when you give me that truth, that will guide me. And I will come back to you. I will come back to you to the mountain, uh, to the altar where you are present. And the altar in the temple was using for forgiveness. <laughs> because you were bringing the animal and the sacrifice animal for your sins. And he basically wanted to say, I want to come close to you. I want to ask for daily forgiveness from you. And that's I will be close to you. Because all of us, we are sinners. All of us, we are making mistakes in life. All of us, in daily return, return, routine, we need to come to God and ask for forgiveness. That God will forgive our life. Psalmist here is thinking about, uh, about God's faithfulness in the past. He's thinking about presence uh, God's presence in his life through unfailing love, but he's asking direction and truth for the future. What we learn this Sunday for this psalm, and when I was preparing this and praying, uh, there are a few things I want to share with you. First thing, in, if you are in a problem, or if you're under oppression, if you're under the different situation, or you when you be, the first principle that I see is that we can speak honestly to God directly. That is the first point. Speak to God honestly and directly. God wants to hear our prayers. And even Psalm, sometimes he was confused. Why did you forget me? God, what is happening to, uh, to this situation? God wants us to speak to him directly. When I was reading first time Psalms, I said, oh, this David was very direct. He doesn't like these enemies around himself. <laughs> you know, but that was his direct feelings in the situation. And, and I want to encourage you uh, that you can pray to God even when you feel that God is not close to you. Tell him that. There are a lot of pressures in this world. We're living in a fast forward world, many rapid changings, a lot of informations, unsecure futures, war, problems, climate change. And all of these voices can bring a fear in our lives as a Christians. But then, and some of these things can touch your life. You can say, God, help me. God, what is happening with this situation? Teach me. Speak to him directly and honestly. This is the special times when God is speaking to us through his word, his people, when we can refresh our relationship with God. C.S. Lewis said one time, God whispered to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pains and problems. It is megaphone to rouse a deaf world. When we are going through hardships, God is speaking, shouting to our lives. And then we can hear him. Then we can say, ah, oh, now I need to come back to him. Now I know why, why this is happening into my life. God never said that the journey will be easy. But he did say that the arrival will be worthwhile. <laughs> journey following Christ is a lot of challenges and issues in life. A lot of joys, of course. But sometimes it's a lot of... Uh, uh, this journey is a lot of, should not be easy, but the arrival will be worth, worthwhile. Proverbs, King Solomon wrote, he said, worries, problems, weight a person down. Encouraging word cheers a person up. We can listen and focus on our problems daily. But when we hear the word of God, when we hear the sermon, when we hear the song, when we hear the prayer, the God is using these things to bring us up to bring us up from that situation. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 11, 18 to 20, he said, all things have committed to me by the Father. No one knows Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chose to reveal him. He just wanted to identify himself. He said, Father, give me opportunity. Give me a power that I can reveal him. And then these verses are very important. He said after that, come to me, all who you are worried and burden, and I will give you the rest. Christ is authorized only who can give you the peace, who can give you the rest, because he died on the cross for your sins, and he can understand you, and he can help you in the midst of your problems and your issues. 
speak honestly to God. Second thing, challenge yourself. We can see the psalmist is asking question to himself. Why are you discouraged? Why? We know that Elijah also, he was discouraged, and God asked him a few times, <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> why are you here? But the psalmist is in, uh, challenging himself. Three times he's asking himself, why are you downcast and discouraged? And three times he's confessing, put trust in, put hope in God only. He's challenging ourselves. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones was a famous cardiologist who was a famous preacher, and he wrote a uh, commentary on the, this psalm, and, and this is very interesting that I came across. He said the following, Have you realized that most of your unhappiness in life is due to the fact that you are listening to yourself instead of, of talking to yourself? Take those thoughts that come to you in the moment you wake up in the morning. You have not originated them, but they are talking to you. They bring back the problems of yesterday, etc., etc. Somebody is talking. Who is talking to you? Yourself is talking to you. Now the man's treatment in the Psalm 20, uh, 42 was this. Instead of allowing this self to talk to him, he starts to talking to himself. Why are you cast down our soul? He asked. His soul has been depressing him, crushing him. So he stand up and say, self, start to listen what I need to talk to you. Dr. Marty Lloyd-Jones, basically he wants to say, sometimes when you wake up in the early morning in life, we are hearing just voices. We're hearing, we are thinking, thinking, and we overburden ourselves with the problems and with the issue. Uh, he challenged us here to talk to ourselves, to say why you're sad, why you should be sad. Stand up, praise God, and, 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 and worship him. Speak honestly to God. Challenge yourself every day. And like Corey Ten Boom said, let God's promises shine on your problems. Let God's promises shine on your problems problems. Don't focus on yourself only. Don't focus on your problems only. Focus on God. Psalm is here in the midst of his problems. He describes his problems. He also affirm to himself attributes of God, who he is and what he has done. He mentioned him, God, you are my rock. You are my salvation. You are source of my life. He attribute. And that's very important of uh, scripture memorization. Because sometimes, and Brother Paul was doing a small group, I hope so he will do in the next season, how to memorize scriptures. Because when you memorize the word of God, when you m come in some stormy situation, the promises of God will come in your life. And that will give you hope. That will give you faith. That will give you a power that you can overcome. Uh, or you can go through the issues of life. The third thing, remember the past and pray for today. Praise God for the past times of God's faithfulness in your life. Remember, can you just remember the past? How did you become a Christian? Who shared the gospel with you? How many times God was faithful in your life? Remember, we are easy to forget. We are easy to forget. We have a shortage of memory. When a small problem happened in our life, we forget how God was helping us in the bigger problems. Remember the past, celebrate and worship God, and pray for today for guidance, for daily guidance that we can come to Christ because He is the only connection, only way to God that we can have relationship with Him. We don't need to go to the temple. Christ is our temple to God. Christ is our meeting point. Christ is our connection with with God and sing joys to him sing songs to him with a joyful heart with a joyful heart and I think this is very important when you come in a hard situation that you can remember the past and pray for today and the fourth thing refresh your spiritual life don't allow that you can be in a dry situation with your relationship with God on a daily basis that's very dangerous don't miss meeting with God Sometimes when we have important meetings, we are preparing, calling, and, and the most important meeting is with God. Psalm 63, 1, he said, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you my whole 
being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I am thirsty to spend time with you. I'm thirsty to be in your presence. I was in Indonesia. There it was very hot, and the water was very important. <laughs> you know, when you're thirsty, you where, where I should drink the water. And 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 Psalmist start talking about like we need to be, have that thirst, that need to spend time with our loving Father. Amen. And sometimes other priorities come in our life, and we lose this opportunity. Psa- Isaiah 51 said, "Come buy wine." Uh, uh, Isaiah 51. 55 1 he said come all who are thirsty come to the waters all of you who don't have a money buy come i will give you drink for your thirst god doesn't want that we our soul will be dry our soul is like a like a plant if we need to put water every day in our relationship with God, our faith with God, we need to water, that, water down every day our relationship with God. Sometimes the, this world around ourselves can squeeze the life from us. We need to get the life from God in relationship with God. So I want to challenge you, uh, come to Christ. Christ is your Savior. Jesus Christ died on your cross for your sins. Christ can give a the water of life in your life. Amen? Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them spring of the water well, welling up to eternal life. John chapter 4. John chapter 7. He said, On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in loud voice, Let everyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture said, rivers of the living water will flow from within them. When we are close to God, when we are spending time with God through Christ, when we accepted Christ as a personal Savior, repented from our sins and believe what he has done on the cross for us, the Bible said that we are finding a meaning of life, purpose in life. And the only spiritual food for our soul is meeting with Christ, meeting with God. And not only that, that your soul will be fresh, you will be a blessing for other people around yourself. People will see your joy, people will see your peace, will feel you will be a small fountain of life to other people in Belgrade. Brothers and sisters, this is not only a question of your relationship with God, it's a question of our influence as a church in society. We're living in a spiritual desert. People are searching for life, for the drink, for the true drink. And we know this is a Jesus Christ. So let's learn from this psalm. Let's learn from this psalm these four important things. And I want to challenge you. Speak honestly to God directly. Speak honestly to God. Speak on it. Pray to Him. Challenge yourself. When you come in a bad mood, Challenger say, why are you discouraged, Samuel? <laughs> why are you a downcast? There is a lot of reason you should be joyful, yeah? Uh, 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 quote Bible verses from the Bible. Remember the past and pray for, to, uh, for today and refresh your spiritual life. I will finish with a, with a story and I will invite worship band to come and, uh, and, uh, and, and lead us in a, in a song. Uh, archaeologists uh, uh, did one uh, excavation in Rome, and there was some famous well called the Well of the uh, Young Ladies, where the young ladies were coming and taking the water, but they couldn't find for a thousand years that place. And they were uh, digging there, and, uh, and they hit on the place where the, where, the, where the well was there, and the clear, fresh water came out of that chaos there. And, uh, and, uh, and it's very interesting, the, the comment, uh, the spiritual comment about that well is that Christ invites us that he can be a life in our lives. But sometimes a lot of problems, a lot of garbage come and close that well into our lives that we can be a blessing and a fountain for others. A lot of worries, a lot of issues are just coming on our heart. And instead of going life in a, like abundance, it's some small drops. We need God to clean. We need to come to the altar. We need to ask for forgiveness of God. We need to ask God to refresh our life 
that the life can be visible in our lives and that we can be a blessings wherever we go. Amen. Next Sunday, we will talk about the hope. We will talk about the hope. Please read 42, 43. We will talk about why he's selling three times, telling to us, put hope in God. Let's stand up. We will pray and we will sing the song. And uh, I, I need the two volunteers who will come help. Alexander and Pavle can come uh, to help uh, for the for the. But let's we uh, uh, be in a, in a, in a peace. And maybe God uh, is speaking to you. Maybe you say, "I cannot move anymore myself." There is a lot of waves in my life. Uh, this psalm has a message for you. This psalm is a message for you that you should remember your past that you should lead in direction for the present and put the trust in God for the future. Let's pray, and Alexander, later you can do. Atso, Alexander, kasnije, kao hrene pesma. Yeah. Okay, let's pray. Let's think, let's confess. Speak to God directly. He's here. He knows your problems. But he wants to strengthen your faith. And he wants to be living God in your life. He doesn't want you to be in a dry season. He wants to be in a fresh season that you can be a refreshment for others around yourself. We should be a Christians who are fruitful. Because God is working in our lives. We should not just be complaining and focus on our problems. Let's focus on living and be God. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity. Speak to our life. Be a megaphone of your voice in our problems, in our issues. God, thank you that you are God of our salvation. That you are rock. That you are joy and source of life. Thank you that... You never forget us. Even we sometimes don't feel you are close. Help us, God, not to forget the past, how you were faithful in our lives. Lead us with your light and your truth daily that we can make good decisions. And Lord, refresh our relationship with you. Let's from next week, God, you be priority number one. The meeting with you to be the main meeting of the day. Help us, God, that our soul will be not dry, that we can be refreshed by your Holy Spirit, by your word, by everything what you want to speak to us. Thank you for this psalm and lead us, God, and help us that we can put practically these truths in our daily life. We are praying this in the name of Jesus. Amen.